Are you experiencing a strange lightning in the tendril extremities? Coupled with the sensation of increased gravitational pull on the covers of your visual orbs. Affirmative. Conclusion. We are experiencing a human condition known as fatigue. The prescribed remedial activity for which uh, is uh, to counter fatigue. We place our left hand on the female's breast and invite her to submit to the mating ritual. No. All right, her. I forgot the flowers and box of chocolates. First, you purchase the nice no. box of chocolates. Cadet Niven, you are confusing the remedy for erotic arousal. To dispel fatigue, we do the sleep thing. You are such a stickler. And in order to do the sleep thing, we require... Yes, don't tell me, I know this. It's long, flat, and soft the bicycle. A bed! A bed! I knew that! You will attend the supervisor, Cadet Niven, while I secure a room or rooms containing one or more bed or beds. You are a man, correct? I'm what? You are a manly male personage, in my opinion. Is that right? Indeedy. Therefore, the hat gesture would be superfluous. Look, friend, I'm a busy man. I seek the temporary sanctuary of a room. I understand you are prepared to hire your spare ones. How long? How long? I would estimate at least 10 feet. How long do you want it for? Ah. Seven and a half hours, or until the local star illuminates this hemisphere, whichever is the sooner. You want it for the night? No. Seven and one half of your hours will suffice. It's cheaper by the night. Really? The hourly thing, that's mainly for couples. See what I mean? Couples? How about threesomes? Threesomes, foursomes, one man and his dog. It's immaterial to me. There will be three of us occupying the room. Like I say, whatever. That'll be 25 plus 5 for clean sheets. Phil, do you see? Bring your pardon, good proprietor. It would take several hours to complete this book. Good sir, what? much as I am desirous of observing your regulatory guidelines, I fear I do not have the time to fill in this weighty tome. I am already beset by fatigue. You just fill in one line. That is acceptable. Name? Flynn? Address? What is it? What's what? The address. Here? Yes, here. You've put in your own address. This is my address. Your home address, where you live. Good fellow, sporting counterfeit hair, not wishing to be pernicious. I must point out the ludicrous flaw in your argument. Had I a home address? Surely I would avail myself of the rooms therein to perform the sleeping ritual. Look, friend, you're mistaking me for someone who could give a damn. Look at all these people. They don't put in their real addresses. They don't even put in their real names. They lie? They make them up, see? Do you really think the bloke in number 17 is Pope Gregory V? Do you think Adolf Hitler is bunking out in number 29? I see. So, I invent a false name, a fallacious address, and a spurious nationality, and enter them in this database. That's right. To what end? It's the law. I see. Name? Flinbert Periwinkle. Address? Planet 167, the Virgilian system. Nationality? Gabbard Libolian. Have you secured a sleeping receptacle? Yes. 
with, I may say, a chillingly impressive display of pseudo-humanoidity. The next phase of the transaction requires us to view and approve the premises. I suggest we do so without the supervisor's company. Sure. His appearance seems to disturb the humanoids, especially when his head comes off. Mm. Good point. Where shall I put him? Just leave him here. Will he be safe? The supervisor can take care of himself, Cadet Niven. Nevertheless, I'd feel more comfortable if he were sheltered from the elements. Don't worry, supervisor. We shall return post hastily. Niven? I like it. Slightly less roomy than I'd imagined, but it does have a certain quaint charm. Yes, the decor leaves a little to be desired and is somewhat cramped. Nonetheless, it is extremely convenient for the front door and it will serve our purposes handsomely. Agreed. We'll take it. Good grief. Visitors already? Good evening, female person with brutally over-applied cosmetics. Welcome to our humble dwelling. Please excuse the state of the place. We've only just moved in. We haven't quite got it as we'd like it yet, but... Oh, and you brought us some gifts. I am deeply touched. You said it. This is the executive twin suite. It's a little more expensive than the other rooms, but I can see you are men of good taste. Excellent. Yes. It is even more spacious than the moving room you showed us earlier. Oh, yes. I think I prefer this one in every department. Look, it even has two bicycles. Beds. Absolutely. Like I say, every state-of-the-art convenience. Incredible. A box with another box inside it. Of course, these executive extras don't come cheap. What then is the fee, good fellow? Well, a luxury like this, I'll be stealing from myself if I let you have it for less than 150. That is acceptable. Plus another 50 if you want the TV remote control. Your fairness is equaled only by the unbearable foulness of your oral aroma. convinced that this remote control is performing entirely correctly. Perhaps it's just a question of technique. Here, let me try. There, I think that's better. I was enjoying that. Great Niven, must I remind you of the primary purpose for our being here? Yes. To perform the sleeping ritual? Of course, yes. Well then. Right. Right. Let's see. Adopt prone position. Oh, of course. Don't tell me. Oh. Eliminate visual input. And simply wait. Cadet Niven? Yes, Cadet Flynn? Have you achieved sleep yet? I am so completely asleep, I feel I may never awaken. Excellent. I will fetch a supervisor. And we will join you in the sleeping ritual. 
Hopefully, when we rouse ourselves at hemispheric illumination time, he will feel more inclined to communicate with us. Okay, it's just taken the hat. Perhaps one of us should go down, preferably you. I'll be coming back for him soon. Better sit tight. What the hell is he doing in there? Damn it! The moving room is locked. Well, if the gallywaddle won't come to the bunky poop. Ah. Ah. Yep. That would be what they call pain. It's keeping him. Uh oh, trouble. No, it's one of ours. I ordered it while you were checking us in. Do you think this is wise? I mean, if we steal their dead friend, they could go bananas with that ray gun thing. And I, for one, do not want to spend the rest of eternity reliving the past 12 hours in various permutations with you. Nothing personal. They won't connect it with us. I mean, let's face it, Harry, they're not the brightest of life forms. Otherwise, they wouldn't have sent us back in time so that we could track them. I mean, that is so dumb. Send us forward, sideways, anyways. But no, they put us right back in the position where we can pick up the trail and follow them. Now what, room service? A little something I ordered from hardware. Little something, right? They're not going to catch us napping again. You know what? Maybe I don't need disciplining quite as much as I thought. Some other time. Supervisor? Supervisor? OK, just nice and still now. You are being most incommodifying. Just half a second. That was subtle. <clears throat> ah, ah. ah, there you are, you old flamber nickel. Is it working? <gasps> yep, loud and clear. We're going. You're going to miss us post-mortem? Because I'm not. Technically, we should call for backup. No one is sharing this one, Harry. This is our ticket to redemption. That baby can pinpoint them to the nearest 18 inches. They don't turn over in bed without we know it. What is that you're breathing, exactly? Air. Uh, 
Any particular reason for that? Just a precaution. I mean, this is exactly the sort of area where they try out new viral strains. God only knows what they put in the atmosphere here. Harry, we are they. All right, God only knows what we've put in the atmosphere here. Hey, just what the hell is going on with you? I'm sorry. How may I be of assistance? Uh, hey. No problem. Are you sure? Absolutely. You just carry on with whatever you want to do. Like I say, I'm blind, deaf and dumb. I'm not even seeing you right now. I never saw you. Who are you, anyway? <laughs> the more I encounter these Earthoids, the more I fear that they are insane to the point of desperation. Cadet Yes, Cadet Flynn? Are you still sleeping? Like a Terran suckling. Good, then the supervisor and I will endeavor not to disturb you. Oh. Cadet Flynn, do you suppose I have performed the sleep ritual for a sufficient duration? I hardly think so. Why? Oh. Brutally, I, I, I find the ritual pointless and, yes, frankly, dull beyond belief. I shall awake. Right. Let's see. Ah. Oh. Barely a snooze. Ah. I see you've brought the supervisor up there. Yes. The impish old rascal had vacated his place of shelter and secreted himself in a new location. But he'll have to get up earlier than that to pull the sheep's detritus over my visual input units. Good at Flynn, is there not something amiss with the supervisor's appearance? I forgot his hat. Yes, and that long underhead piece. Ah, his body. Yes, I deliberately left that down there on purpose. For you to fetch. In order to test you. I see. Back in a minute to look. All right, Harry, you don't ask him about any of your imaginary illnesses, OK? And what about my beveled head? No. It's not imaginary, just feel it. No. A, a beveled head is not normal. All right. Where did you get this from? You know we can't tell you. So is it non-human? Well, that's what's curious. You see, most of him, yes, perfectly human-esque. Pass any scrutiny, but uh, round here, round the neck. The tissue that's been dead the longest. It's not even animal. Not animal? What's that mean? The tissue's changing slowly. It's as if it's been genetically altered to mimic human tissue and is slowly reverting. Reverting to what? Look, I'm not going on the record with this. There is no record. We were never here. Good. Because I have a reputation which will be utterly trashed if I came out and admitted that every test I've run indicates that this gentleman is, in fact, some sort of vegetable. Well, thank you so extremely not at all, Cadet Flynn, for your timely non-warning about the moving room. Had the greasy proprietor not been effecting repairs at the appropriate moment, I would have had nothing to cushion the impetus of my downward trajectory. Cadet Flynn? Oh, no, this is too much! Step in! Revive and emote! Revive and emote! What? Who's bifurcating the flange of the skip Concern! on? Concern! Concern! Get that fertilizer away from me, you somberistic abilism! Cadet Flynn? Wow. For a moment back there, I seem to have accessed some kind of bizarre alternative reality where the physical laws of the known universe no longer apply. 
I was temporarily under the illusion I was being chased along an infinite rubber walkway by an axe-wielding giant potato. Cadet, terrible news. We've lost the remainder of the supervisor. Lost him? Gone. Utterly and without trace. How is he going to pass himself off as a native of this planet without a hat to tip to females? We have several replacement hats in the briefcase. Really? Thank Blender Pip. For a moment there, I thought the entire mission was compromised. We're not out of the unspoiled timberland yet, Cadet Niven. Finding a replacement body is a different matter entirely. But fear not. With a little luck and a lot of water, we'll soon have the supervisor looking as good as new. in the room, right? Yeah. Hard to say, but I guess they were sleeping. Let's take them. I say we call for backup. No, I've told you. We need this, Harry. It's our one chance to get a piece of the big one. What, the Anderson thing? The Anderson thing. Wow. OK, well, at least we should choose our moment. And when would that moment be, sweetums? moment when you're somewhere else. A moment when they're separated from that ray gun. I've been awake for 36 hours out of the last 24, and I don't think I could survive another blast back to the past without some rest. All right. I suppose it's close enough to standard procedure. We'll wait till one of them leaves the room and take them separately. I'll take the first watch. You can get your beauty sleep. OK, sure. What? Uh, just... I wonder what vegetables dream about. 